Hey fellas, Meat Trapper here. And today I want to share with you some interesting things that I've learned lately. And they have nothing to do with trapping or setting traps or snaring or survival or anything like that. What I've been learning lately is um, an interesting aspect of human psychology. Now, some time ago, I had been talking with Clint Locklear of Wolf on, Wolfer Nation, and if you're not subscribed uh, to Wolfer Nation on YouTube, you need to subscribe. Uh, it's a great channel. But we were talking about the bushcrafters and the survival type guys who have this idea in their head that they can survive using primitive traps. They can survive using deadfalls to catch mice, paracord snares, pitcher wire snares, what have you. Recently I did an episode of Meat Trapper Radio where I extolled the virtues of another channel um, and the guy's name is uh, The Bearded, The Wooded Beardsman. I always get that wrong. The Wooded Beardsman. And that is another excellent channel. Uh, if you're interested in this type of material at all, you need to subscribe to his channel. Uh, what he did is he actually went out and put methods to the test and found what worked and what didn't work and he, he showed it. Uh, no BS, um, just, the, just the straight truth. And so he and I had begun a correspondence and he allowed me to comment on um, some videos on his channel and what I found was there was a lot of resistance to what I was saying. And basically my, my position on primitive traps is that they are a great way to starve. They are not a viable long-term survival option. Uh, primitive traps are extremely time-consuming to construct. You're going to burn more calories than you're going to consume, so it's a net calorie loss. Primitive traps can't handle uh, climate change. They can't handle a warm day going to a day of freezing rain or snow. They can't handle that. Uh, primitive traps suck at blind sets. Uh, when food is plentiful, um, uh, primitive traps relying on bait simply aren't going to be effective. Um, that, that is common sense. Uh, primitive traps aren't species specific. Uh, you can't target uh, a particular animal and, and try and avoid another animal with a primitive trap. Uh, if you have a deadfall and it has something on it, it doesn't matter whether it's a mouse or a rat or a coon or, or what have you. If it comes up and touches it, you know, it's going to trigger the trap. Um, so I went through all of the reasons why primitive traps are a bad idea. Now Clint over at Wolfer Nation has done, I think it's a six-part series uh, at this point, pointing out in cold, hard detail why primitive traps are a bad idea, why they don't work. Um, so, what I've run into, and what, did I want, what I wanted to share with you, was the pushback that I've gotten from the so-called bushcrafters and so-called survivalists. Now, notice I didn't say trappers, and that's because the people spouting this stuff are not trappers. They don't purchase and hold a trapper's license. They don't regularly practice their, what they're preaching. They can't post any pictures of, uh, catching enough animals to live off of. Now there are people that have gotten primitive traps to catch an animal. It is possible. Under the right conditions, you can catch something with a primitive trap. But the point being, you're not going to survive off of primitive traps. It's not going to work. So when I started getting pushback, there were a number of things that people would throw in my face to argue with. Number one was there was a gentleman uh, who was English and he's living in a country where you're not even allowed to set a trap. But evidently he was ex-military and he had been to some training overseas and he had seen indigenous people uh, using some primitive traps and they'd caught some stuff. Well see what he did is he cherry-picked a very very specific scenario where it would be possible to catch animals. That is an area in the jungle where the temperature isn't going to change. You don't have to worry about snow falling or ice falling. 
or climate changing. You don't have to worry about changes in animal behavior because of the temperature or anything like that. So you see, he was able to cherry pick one specific example and say, you're wrong because I've seen it work under these conditions. Now, mind you, what those indigenous people were doing, they weren't living off what they caught. They were supplementing their other supplies with what they caught. There's a big difference there. There's a big difference between surviving and supplementing, okay? The other thing that I thought was interesting was people would say, if primitive traps are not a viable option, how did the Indians survive? How did, how did primitive people survive? Well, I think that's pretty obvious that the Indians didn't survive by figure four deadfalls. They practiced a lot of things. They practiced agriculture. Uh, they hunted in groups and tribes. Um, there was division of labor. There was a community that was organized and, and focused on one objective. The Indians would do anything that they had to do to survive. They did, if they had to start a fire to drive animals off a cliff, they did that. They would just run them right off a cliff and they would have plenty to eat. That's because they were surviving, not playing with sticks. The other thing that I find, that I found interesting was when it finally push came to shove and they started calling me names and using obscenities and all the stuff that people do when they're out of ammo, I challenge them to put up or shut up. Make a video, show me that your system works. Show me that you can catch enough to live off of. Show me that you can catch animals large enough to have a usable fat store because you've got to have fat and you're not going to get fat uh, off of a mockingbird or a blue jay, okay? You're not going to get fat off a rabbit or a squirrel. That's common sense. You're going to have to go after a larger animal. Show me how to do that with a paracord snare. Show me how to do that with a deadfall. Well, here was the response to that. <laughs> and this is good. i got to give the guy credit. It's illegal. Because this guy was from Virginia. It's illegal. He checked the regs because I said, you know, show me the regs. He went and checked. Can't use a deadfall. So they're off the hook. It's the old, well, I can't show you how valid uh, these things are because I'd go to jail if I did. Uh, <laughs> like, like there is a game warden on planet Earth that is going to arrest somebody for smacking a squirrel on the head with a rock. Give me a break. But you see, it's an excuse. It's an out. It's a, I, don't, I, I, I can't tell you because it's secret. I can't show you. I'd have to kill you. You know, it's bullshit, people. And the propensity for these people to make excuses is amazing. Now, what I found interesting is in these scenarios that they would come up with, because that's what this is. It's a fantasy scenario. They're going to have certain things in their survival situation. They're going to have the custom-made two or three hundred dollar um, Scandi grind survival knife or whatever. They're going to or the uh, bussy survival knife. They're going to have that. They're going to have the ferro rod. They're going to have paracord. They're going to have pitcher wire. They're going to have all of that, but they're not going to actually have a modern aircraft cable snare. Really? I mean, if you're going to carry pitcher wire, carry a snare. Good God. How hard is that to understand? You know, how big is a Sleepy Creek number one long spring trap? It'll fit in the palm of your hand. And it will feed you for years. It will catch animals, birds. It, it will catch everything for years. And it'll fit in the palm of your hand. But they, they're not going to have that. They're going to have paracord. And, and pitcher wire and ferro rods. It's just bullshit. It's, it's a contrived scenario where grown men want to go out in the woods and engage in a hobby. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine. It's better than sitting at home watching football or playing video games. But when you get on the internet and you start telling people that these are valid techniques, these are valid methods, you're doing people a disservice and you're lying to yourself. And really, that's the thing that I learned from this entire experience, is when I try and tell people to learn modern trapping and to use modern materials, 
and not to base their hope on paracord snares or deadfalls. That has nothing to do with trapping. That, that is not a trapping discussion. That is a world view discussion because they have constructed this world view in their head where they've got it covered. They've got it covered. In their mind, they've addressed that concern and put it to bed. That's all it is. It's no different from a prepper who buys 30 buckets of wheat and sticks it in the garage and says, I got it covered. No, you don't. No, you don't. All you did was pull out a credit card and buy peace of mind. And that's what this survival primitive picture wire stuff is. It's a way to, to tell yourself that you've got it covered with just a few little items. It's a lie. You can make all of the excuses in the world, but it's a lie. And what I've learned is trying to convince these people of reality, trying to get them to get off of their ass into the woods and actually do it so that they will learn for themselves. It's, it's futile. It's, it's no different than trying to convince a liberal that Hillary Clinton is bad. It will never happen. It will never happen. Just like you're not going to convince an atheist to believe in God, and you're not going to convince a believer to become an atheist. It doesn't matter what arguments come out of your mouth. It doesn't matter what facts you state. It doesn't matter what video you show. It doesn't matter. Because they have convinced themselves of something, and they are the only ones who can change that. I can't. So I am basically done um, with that effort. If anybody wants to learn how to trap, you can look at my channel. I've got Conibear School. I've got Snare School. I've got Foothold School. I've got over 200 videos. You can go to Wolfer Nation. There are a lot of really good trapping channels out there. It's all free. There are no excuses. No excuses. You know, I guess they, you know, the old expression holds true. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Um, and if you, you know, you, you try and teach a pig to sing, it's, it's a futile effort because all you're going to do is uh, piss the pig off and you're going to get covered with mud in the process. So anyway, that is my open letter to the people who think that they're going to pack pitcher wire and paracord in a survival kit and go catch stuff. Good luck. You're going to need it.